Hi folks, how you doing? Great, my name is Stan and I'm pretty much happy and excited to be here just to speak a word into someone's life. You see, I like to believe that there's somebody out there who, who loves Jesus. You know, you love God. You see, the reason why you've actually committed your life into God's hands is because you love Him. The reason why you made a decision for Christ is because you love Him. But nevertheless, there are these little folks, there are these little things that seems to be getting in your path and getting in your way, and it seems as though you are doing exactly the same old things that you used to do before. See, one, one of the things that we need to understand as we talk about this love that individuals have for Christ is that we need to understand one thing which is one important, which is very important, and that is a man is in three. A man is a spirit, he has a soul, and he lives in the body. And that's one thing that we need to understand. We need to understand that the man who is a man is the spirit. So the day a person makes a decision for Christ, what actually gets saved is the spirit. The spirit is what gets born again. And it's really unfortunate that the soul remains the same and the body remains the same, but the spirit has been changed. And see, for this reason, the Bible then goes on to tell us that um, be he transformed by the renewing of the mind. And this is what you get in the book of Romans chapter 12. The Bible says, don't be conformed to the systems of this world, but be he transformed by the renewing of the mind. In, in other words, the things that you do that are byproducts of the things that you think about. Whatever you think about, you find yourself talking about it. And whatever you talk about, you find yourself doing it. And the things that you do, they create in you a habit. And the habits that you create, they then formulate your character and determines your ultimate destiny. So in other words, you have made a decision and you have made a decision for Christ, but nevertheless, your soul has to go through a process of salvation. You need to understand that in as much as it is an instant thing for the spirit, it is a process for the soul. Your mind has got to go through a process. In other words, when we speak about the soul, what we are speaking about, we are speaking about the realm of the intellect, the realm of will, the place of emotions, the place of feelings, the place where dreams and desires are birthed. And, and once that place is not as long as it is not under your full control, it is under the control of the wicked one. So in other words, you need to gain control over your conscious mind. You need to gain control over your subconscious mind in order for you to then be able to correctly function and operate as you ought to. I know you beat yourself every day when you go to sleep. Like, I should not have done what I did. I should not have gone where I've gone. I should not have been with the people that I was with. Simply because there is a war. <laughs> the, f the flesh is fighting against the spirit and the spirit is fighting against, is a fighting against the flesh. I, I mean, <laughs> Paul tells us and he tells us very clearly that the, that which I desire to do, I, I can hardly do. And that which I don't want to do, I find myself doing it. So in other words, you need to understand that it's a battle, it's a fight, and you have been given victory. Because the thing is, you have Jesus fighting the battle on your behalf. He's right there on the inside of you. The only thing you got to do is you need to empower him. And the only way you can empower the Christ in you is by making sure that you read God's word. Word, that you meditate on God's word, that you make the word of God a reality in your life. In other words, it shouldn't just be something that is found in this, it, it is found in, in a book. No, it has to become a life on the inside of you. The word of God has got to leap out of the scriptures and become something real that you can activate and use time and again in your very own life. I'd like to believe this is helping somebody to understand that the decision they have made is a perfect one. You have made a wonderful choice to receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. So now the next thing is you need to walk the talk. You see, you have talked about it and you have confessed it and now you need to walk the talk. But the only way you can walk the talk is when you have made your mind to align with the talk. So in other words, it shouldn't be just a confession that you have done and do not beat yourself every time you do something wrong. So the Bible writes, I write unto ye little children that see not, but if you sin, you need to remember this. You have an advocate with the Father who happens to be Jesus Christ. 
So in other words, Jesus is right there standing in between, standing, on, standing in the gate for you. And you don't have to feel beat down. You don't have to feel like, oh, I shouldn't have done this. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. You need to understand that whatever you do and you do it wrong is just a suggestion to your mind that there are certain things that you need to do and you need to do them right. And the only way you can get to do them is when you have equipped yourself with the word of the living God. You see, the Bible is very clear. The only thing you need to do, you need to develop a hunger for God's word. Where you begin to meditate on God's word, you begin to think about God's word. And the moment you meditate on his word and think upon his word, it, it then creates a new reality in your life. And it creates a new way of living, a new way of doing things. And you can't continually continue in the dark ways of doing things after which you have taken in God's word. So it's too early to beat yourself up. It's too early to be angry and mad at yourself. No, you you have just embarked on a journey. And you need to understand that the enemy is going to be throwing everything he has at you. And you need to be wise. And stand up and say, get thee behind me, Satan. 